the idea that getting a fast car, getting a hot chick or whatever, that it's like in some way placating to a juvenile fantasy is bullshit. And that's where I got to take issue with this. And I, I, I don't think like, again, I, I don't think he's wrong. I just think that there needs to be more added to this. I think it's just incomplete. So the incomplete part being that just because a guy wants a fast car and he wants to have like hot women or whatever, that doesn't necessarily like, I am sure that there are guys in their twenties, thirties, forties, fifties, whatever, who all want that same juvenile fantasy. Why is it juvenile? Why is it shallow? Why is anything men do termed as shallow? And what is, what's, what's the next deep? <laughs> what's what? So the thing that gets me is I, I'm, I threw this out here because of the shit that was going on with Justin Waller recently where people were coming at him like that dude in the, the intro are coming at him for essentially doing what he wants to do. Acts of selfish acts of selfishness, according to them. Anyways, I don't see it. It's like might be self-interested because from a very early age, we teach men not to be their mental point of origin. Make your do unto others as you like that kind of stuff, like be serviceable, be a, a servant leader, be whatever the fuck you want to call it. Right. The idea is that you should think of others before you think of yourself. That's that's how it basically shakes down. And if you want to get laid, you're going to have to put your wife's interest before your own. Happy wife, happy life. That starts when you're five years old, when Johnny is five years old. Oh, do what your mom says. Oh, do what teacher says. Oh, if you don't do this, you'll never get a girlfriend. Oh, you got to get a good job. Oh, you got to go to college. Oh, you got to do this. Oh, you got to you got to facilitate the relationship. You got to she's got to come first. You come second. That's what we teach guys all the fucking time. But what what is it really boiling down to? It's boiling down to the fact that this guy is making everything outside of himself his mental point of origin. So if you want to look at what is a what is a midlife crisis, it's a guy who's suddenly realizing that he should have been his own mental point of origin all along. Mike doesn't have a, Mike Sartain doesn't have a problem with mental point of origin. He is definitely his the, the first thought that comes into his head. Light and self-interest can't help others until I help myself. And I can't help others as well as when I help myself first. That goes a, fundamentally goes against everything in a gynocentric social order. So when a guy finally starts to think like, hey, maybe I should be the one who's making the decisions here. Maybe I should actually cop to some of this authority. And then you get burned for it. Then they get divorced for it. Then they go, hey, you know what? How come you're not fucking me anymore? I'm going to go cheat on you because I'm in a sexist fucking marriage. And it's the only thing I can do. Or I'm going to divorce you or you're going to divorce me because we just simply don't have, you know, we don't have that chemistry anymore. I, uh, I, I love you, but I'm not in love with you. Yeah, well, she was in love with the guy who had authority and who fucking had the balls to, to you know, to have a, have a world, have a frame. And that's the problem. I think that a lot of like when women have a problem with guys who are older dating younger women is because that guy already, he's the turnkey relationship they were hoping that they were going to get because they were waiting at the finish line for Mike Sartain or Justin Waller. And that's why they want to run Justin up the flagpole because Justin has a wife, two kids, and it's closed on her end and it's open on his end. If he wants to fuck around, he can fuck around. That's what he does. I think at some point, like when the kids get older, he probably will kind of pivot back into something that's a little bit more traditional. But for right now, people will run him up the flagpole. Why? And they'll say, oh, he's juvenile. He's going like, trust me, Justin Waller has been doing this for a very long time. He's not having a crisis of identity. He's not having a midlife crisis whatsoever. This is just he's just so high value that he can do. He can do this. It's an option for him. And he has decided to to take that option. Very like Mike Sartain. I don't know if the, he'll ever get married with Kylie. I maybe I don't know. That would fundamentally change their nature of their relationship because right now the, it's technically sort of the same thing. He's with her, but she brings women into the relationship too. Like if he finds a girl attractive, then they have a threesome. Right? That's their that's their thing. Still technically open on his end, closed on her end, but. Since she likes girls and he does too, then it works out for them and they're not married. They don't have any kids, whatever. I don't know how long that's actually sustainable, but when people see that, they go, oh, that is so selfish, selfish. Uh, yeah. Well, because he's, it's, it's about him. He has the authority and he has the power to do that. Wealth enforces will. <laughs> and, you know, that's just where he's at. 
I'm not going to do that. I have to close on my end and close on my wife's end. And this is just the lifestyle choice that I've made. It's so that's how you know. So that's why when people see me with like younger women, they go, Oh my God, what happened? What's up with Rolo? Well, I have my relationship is so fucking strong and so, you know, unique in that way that it was, there's, she knows I'm not fucking around anybody. And that's the, that's how it works. But it's nice to have that sort of passive dread going on now and then too. So, anyways, yeah. And so when people see that, and the re one of the reasons I think that people like women have a problem with older men and younger women is for the same reason that beta men oh, have the same problem, but they have a problem with somebody like they want to moralize over Justin Waller's situation. They want to say, oh, he's a bad, bad man for doing that. Well, because they lack the options to do that. And I, I oh, I'm just going to leave you with this because I'm going to, I got to end early today, but like the, uh, the, the end result of this. It's not necessarily a midlife crisis. You want to avoid a midlife crisis, maximize your fucking potential. Hold out until you have the, the judgment and the judgment of character, until you have the frame, until you have the world that you can, if you want a younger woman, fine. If you want a woman who's, you know, in the same you know peer cohort as you, then fine, whatever, do whatever you're going to do. But at least go in with actionable, inform, make an informed decision action on actionable information, which is the red pill, right? Do that. And then decide what you will, what is best for you by making yourself your mental point of origin and enlightened self-interest. I help myself before I help others. It's not that I don't, I do help others. I just help myself first so I can help them better. What is good for me is good for my people. You want to know where patriarchy comes from? It comes from exactly that. Patriarchy is not about, oh, men are just going to you know dominate and tyranny and everything. No, bullshit. It's about responsibility and authority. So I think of myself first. I make the decisions for my family. I make the decision. I'm responsible for my dogs and for my wife and for my kid. If they do something fucked up, then it's on me. We're going to, you're going to, that's going to happen anyways. So if you're like a, an uninvolved, if you're like a, a uninvolved father or whatever else, when your kid does something criminal or he's a drug addict or he's like suicidal or whatever it is. The first thing they're going to say is, where's the dad? It's because men aren't involved. Okay. The reason why that's the default is because we presume a patriarchy that is no longer there. He should be responsible for it. And he should be responsible for it. Absolutely. I 100% agree. He just doesn't have the authority to be responsible because we've basically cut the nuts off of guys today. They can't do that whether it's through the state or it's just through social, you know, society, whatever, you know, your social imperatives, social conventions, men don't have that authority, but they still have that responsibility. You're going to be responsible whether you claim that authority or you don't, you're going to be run up the flagpole. You're responsible for your wife, your kids, your, the, the well-being of your Ned and Anna fucking, uh, I think about all the people who are dependent on me right now and not just my family, like friends, People I employ and not necessarily have maybe maybe they're maybe it's beer money in some cases, but the people like for instance, like, I mean, I have a deal with uh, Sam Bottas in the in the chat right now. He makes money off of my audio audio books still to this day. He gets residuals for that and I'm happy he gets them and I hope that I will do my best for him to continue to get those things. That's part of my existence. My my mother in law. I take care of her freaking rent. I bought her. I bought out the car. She doesn't have a car payment anymore because I'm a swell fucking guy. But that's I do that because duty a familia, right? That's what I should do, and I can. And now, if I can help, I will help. And if I invest in you as a protege, like a Tory or a Kevin Savo or you know Giovanni Sanders or whoever else that I I, I work with, <laughs> Garrett Gaines, <laughs> Garrett, I'm doing it because I can. I'm doing it because I think you're worth it, but I still think you're my responsibility in some ways. My success is your success. The decisions I make affect your, your success to some degree, to a greater or lesser degree. The, the decisions I make, the things I do, what I think is best for me is also ultimately what's best for you. And not because I'm trying to be a tyrant or an asshat. You can believe at any time. <laughs> You know, if, you, if I'm not providing you the right leadership and doing the right thing, if you don't, you think I'm all selfish and fucked up, then you know, buy con deals. <laughs> Anyways, but that's the, that's the, that's how it works. 
And I'm happy to, I am happy to do it. I hope at the end of my life, people say, oh man, he was a swell guy. Let's push him out on that Viking longboat and set it on fire. Thor. <laughs> I hope I, yeah, it's Tiffany. Yeah. T- God damn it. Tiffany even, right. I'm happy to help. If I can, I will. If I'm not, it means I can't. 